we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father of forgiveness, whatever our past, we believe we will have a start as a new person. Everything we pray for, may all our desires be answered. Today, may we receive the keys to receiving answers. Is it health? Is it material things? Is it the way for our children to become obedient? Is it the way to become a patriot for our country and our people? Is it to be an instrument of righteousness, to to spread God's word all over the world? Tonight, may we receive answers. May we only live according to the word. And with our lives, may we have the blessings to live as a witness. Whatever situation, we believe that we will do more well, that our children will do more well. We believe that we will become people with blessings in our late age. May the word be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me. Still, we will do well. So we want to do well, but rather than us wanting to do well, God wants this even more. So if you don't receive blessings, God gives you difficulties. Many people say, oh, it's difficult because we're not receiving blessings. They keep saying it's because God's not giving them blessings. But God, he created all of creation first and then created us so that there's no lackings. And then after that, what we need, Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, God has prepared everything and he says to take them. So our desires, they're already in front of us. But us not receiving, it's it's my wrong. But before it's your wrong, the greatest wrong lies with me, the pastor. Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. If the pastor is fake, he will drag you all to hell. Romans chapter 16, verse 17 to 19. Those who sell my name to fill their bellies, even now they love to boast of their name. And that's why the Europe, the Europe after 2,000 years, they're all ruined. Even now. You know, aren't I someone like that? We cannot throw the stone at anyone. So someone um, was asking for counseling to me. I said, no no matter how much you act like you're respectworthy, you're a liar. Because of your ancestors' rebellion, you'll suffer your whole life and die. And you'll live as a traitor to your country. And you'll ask others to pay taxes so that, you know, to help you live. And your children will fall into that. That's what your life is. And so whatever religion or philosophy, there's no way that it works. So why are you here? To receive answers. After praying, to receive answers. Mark chapter 9, verse 29. There's no other way but prayer. Prayer is the greatest. We pray, but why doesn't it work? It's because you're praying fake prayers where you're not receiving answers. We pray in order to receive answers. So tonight, what is it? What is a prayer that receives answers? We want, we all want this. God, has it made it hard? We all pray, you know, but we, but we say God's not giving us answers. God says he's put it in front of us. You know what's most sad? No matter how much I live, it doesn't work. But these religions that men have made, what men have done, why go there to receive answers? Someone who prays to God and then can't receive answers, you see if they behave as a man should. 
3 John verse 2. Someone whose spirit does well, who's going to heaven, God makes everything do well on earth for them, and He gives them health, and He makes a thousand generations do well. So, Almighty God, what is it that He doesn't know? What is it that He's, you know, unskillful in that He would make us suffer? No, He's made it so easy. You know, someone who only knows hard things, you know, you ask someone who can um, do calculus really well, that you give them something easy, they can't even do that. Why? Because they scorn the easy things, so they can't even do it. You know, these common stones on the road, you know, it's not that there weren't enough stones that, that's not the reason why they couldn't kill Goliath. All those soldiers were gathered there, yet they couldn't kill Goliath. Yet David, with a stone, he... He he killed him. America, which is the strongest country in the world, if you go to their their Ministry of Defense, it's it's in a it's a Pentagon. Even now, America, them receiving God's love, you know they try to do all the good things, the good things in the Bible. So that's a heart of loving God. But loving God the most is to please Him, which is four step repentance. This has come to Korea. It has been given to you and I. Let's live well. Let's really live well. How good is this? So if we've all prayed, then we should receive answers. So if you've prayed, you know, where God can't budge. He says, I can't but help you, you know. Let's receive those promised blessings. You say that you've been praying. The mystery of God, if you pray without four step repentance and you receive answers, then you know that's being a shaman. That those answers, Matthew five, verse forty four to forty five, they are the answers of a shaman. You know, you say, Oh, we prayed and we receive answers. You ask them if they did four step repentance, the mystery of God. If they didn't know if they don't know, then you know, they're a friend of a shaman, a relative of a shaman. How can shamans receive answers? You go all over the country and you see the way shamans live. There's no household that lives properly that is a shaman's household. They can't even receive blessings themselves. How can they bless others? It's so sad. Other religions, you know, it's the same. If you measure acorns, they're they're much the same. You know, there's not much of a difference. So all the Almighty One, to receive answers from Him. When we pray to receive answers, let's receive that key. So you and I, what are we like in our lives, which is like a traveler? You know, if we pray, we need to receive answers. If you're going to pray and you don't receive answers, you know, it's it's worthless. You might as well not do it. But for us to pray, we, we expect answers. You know, there are a lot of people who run around and they've even, you know, they've even run around so much that they've gotten here. You know, there are people, I don't know what grace it is, but they just rolled around and they landed here. They, these people who are, have such good luck, in, in, so we're blessed. So prayers, you know, He's Almighty because there's nothing He cannot do. So for all our desires to be to be offered to him and to receive answers, today let's receive the key. To those who say Amen, we believe we will receive this key. Let's receive this key. Is this Amen? So if you go to whatever religion, they say, you know, run around and do this. In, you know, cold winter, you need to break the ice and to enter into the ice and to wake up. That means all the fish inside the ice will have all woken up. That's not what works. Some people, you know, they they go inside a freezer and, and die. Does that mean they've woken up? No, it's not that you're cold that you've woken up. Every time you pray for God to answer that, He hasn't made it hard. He hasn't made it difficult. He hasn't made it so it works for some and works and work, doesn't work for others. Anyone here, he's made it work. And that's why he's almighty. 
you know, if he was an almighty, he'd be like, well, it can't work for you, and, it, you know, it can't work for you, and, and all he would have is our excuses, but not for almighty God. He says, anyone at this time, if you obey my, obey my word, it will work. We've all come to receive this blessing. Let's receive this and save myself and my country. Is this amen? So this precious thing God gives in one word, Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Let's find this. Oh, pastor, we heard this before. Well, you heard it before. Why haven't you received answers? If you haven't received answers, then you haven't heard it. You have to receive answers. That's when it's yours. There's nothing as good as receiving answers. You know, if you become um, an adopted son of some rich person, yet they run away overseas, then there's nothing for you but to be beat by a stick. But Almighty God, to be an adopted son of Him, you receive the blessings of help. So every time you pray, He will hear you. But who does He hear? Those who are His sons. Just because you're a son, even after becoming a son, you have to get rid of the demons inside of you. If you don't cast away those demons, then all you do is please yourself. You don't give benefit to others. So these people who say they've received answers to their prayers and yet they please themselves, that's not prayer uh, answers being, um, they're not prayer answers. That's demon answers, shaman answers. And yet people all say, pleasing themselves, that they, they've been answered. You know, if Jesus pleased himself, why would he bear our sins? He'd be like, you bear your own sins. But the Lord didn't do that. Your ancestors' sins, they're mine. Your sins, they're mine. Your children's sins, they're mine. Why? Because he wants to forgive us. And this is the promise of the Almighty One. So we're all tormented because of sin. Today, let's end that. That's when he'll answer our prayers. It's because of your sin. That's why you can't even sleep properly. You, you know, you wake up in the middle, middle of the night going, oh, I'm going to kill him. And then you realize it's a dream and you're sweating. So we live in this reality, this torment. You see these parents. Because of rebellion, God says, he will make your children suffer and, and, you know, but you say to your children, haven't I fed you? Haven't I sent you to school? And you talk big saying you've done everything you need to do. So you have nothing to repent of. And that's why your children are all disobedient. They all have this rebellion. Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 18, where the children don't listen to their parents. It's because I first was rebellious. You not receiving answers to your prayers. It's because you say you have to do it first and then I'll do it. This is like Adam. You know, if so this is like butter and cheese. It's like you have to do this first for me and then I'll do this. God says, it doesn't matter what the other person does. If I want to receive blessings, I have to do what I need to do, my duty. So please, according to the word, don't put out these conditions. You have to do this first for me. No, just do what is your duty. Your duty as a husband, your duty as a wife, your duty as a child, your duty as a parent. Just do what I need to do. So, to be, to, to be worthy of this, you need to become a son. So, if you can't receive answers and you're sitting there going, how can I receive answers? Okay, tonight, yes, I'm, I'm going to get the key. Even if you get the key, if you put it in upside down, it's not going to work. You try to put your key in upside down. For a whole month, you can try. It's still not going to work. So, all things, even if you have a key, you have to be able to use it properly. So God says, become my son and then cast out your demons. Then whatever it is, I will answer you. Is this amen? So Romans chapter 8, verse 32, let's read this. 
He who did not spare his own son, but he delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Amen. So here, the Almighty God, who has not spared his own son, who did he not spare his own son for? For me, for me. It's because of you. Oh, you know, it seems like the pastor loves me but doesn't love that other person. You know, these needless things. Oh, the pastor's wife doesn't shake my hand but shake someone else's hands. You know, why, why spend your energy on evil? Don't be concerned about those needless things. You know, however, whoever, however they treat you, the Almighty One, His one and only Son, for your desires, He has killed Him. So I am receiving that love. Is this our man? Don't forget this. So today, we can do well. It will happen. So Almighty God, Whatever it is, he'll hear it and he'll answer it. This God, for me, he has killed his son. This is the greatest love. Anyone can receive this. As much as I love, I receive. So don't be saddened by the earthly things. Don't remember those things. But where does this come from? It comes from envyings and jealousies. Envyings, jealousies... It's Satan. It's to be of the flesh. And that's why 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, if you're of the flesh, there is no salvation. So he didn't spare his son, but for me, for all people, so we're all included, it's sold, we can all do well. So he delivered him over for us all. How will he not also with him? So with him, with the son, he doesn't just give but he gives with the Son. What does he give? He gives all things. So as long as you're with the Son, you can receive all things. So who is the Son? This is the problem. So he gives all things with the Son. So if you're with the Son, all things will work out. But does he just give all things? Well, he gives freely as a gift. So to make this mind, the key is to become a son and also this this gift, the freely giving. So let's find Galatians chapter 3 verse 16. Who is the son? It's Christ. So as you attend church, you know, you live a life of faith, you say you receive answers. If you don't know Christ, without forced repentance, this is all the playing of demons. It's like shamans. They take money to deceive you. So you're deceiving yourself. But that's not the way God gives. He gives with the Son. So who is the Son? Well, there's only one Son. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, there is only one Son. So it, his one and only child is Christ. Let's read together. Now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say and to seeds as referring to many, but rather to one and to your seed. That is Christ. Amen. So with his son, he will hear all your prayers. So there's only one son. It's only Christ. Matthew chapter 1 verse 1 is finding your genealogy. So even if you receive blessings, let's say you received some sacks of rice or a house, that's, there's a limit to that. So if you're a rich person, it's as much as you as as a rich person but if you're almighty then it's almighty so if you're a son to receive that inheritance this is an incredible promise so even if you pray for one thing you can receive all things if you're with the son if you're with the son it's not just receiving answers for what you want because he's almighty you receive all the almightiness Where can you receive this promise in the world? Which religion, which philosophy has this? So if you become a son, if you do four-step repentance, you become an adopted son. If you're an adopted son, what you pray for, you receive answers. And all other things, he'll let you take. 
This is an incredible promise. Why can't you receive? It's because you're not an adopted son. So how do you become an adopted son? You have to go in Christ. What is it to go in Christ? Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. It is the mystery of Christ. It is four-step repentance. You don't even do four-step repentance. How can you become a son? So you and I, you have to first become a son because he answers with the son. So if you're not receiving um, healing for your disease, you're not a son. If you're not receiving answers to your prayer, you're not a son. So within God's word, it's to love your neighbor as yourself, to help others first. You have to help your family. Galatians chapter 6. Your, your, your believers, your brothers. So your family first. If you're not even helping your family and then you help others, that's a senseless person. You see these people, these drunkards, they don't even give $10 to their wife, but then they go out and they give a tip of $50. That's someone who is to be ruined in a filthy way. It's not that God doesn't answer. He does, but there's a condition. It's with the Son. Who is the Son? Christ. What is Christ? Let's find Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. It is the mystery of Christ. This mystery where He comes inside of us. So you say you've done four-step repentance? Why is it that you don't receive answers? But you know what's amazing? If you pray and you don't receive answers, you're evil. It's because your heart is hardened. Romans chapter 11, verse 7. So you say you haven't received answers? You're evil. That's what God has pointed out. If you have received answers, then you're a son. You're in Christ. You, you've done four-step repentance. It's not that God doesn't give answers. He wants to give. But it's not for you to receive answers and then to go off, you know, and then, and then to receive suffering again. No, as soon as you receive answers, you have to become his son at the same time. Is this good or not? This is better than just receiving answers. So he wants you to receive this good thing. Why aren't you doing this? Oh, Lord, you know, forget about that. You know, I'm itchy here. Can you just scratch this and then I'm just going to go off? You know, whether I become a beggar and just be cursed on the street? No, that's not God's love. You know, that sickness you have, it's for you to become my son so that you can open up the fridge as much as you want. You can open up the safe as much as you want. This safe. You know, to open it as much as you please. Do whatever you please. And he's saying today, you take this. So whatever you're praying for, it's so that you'll become his son. So what God wants to give to you, it's not just to give this one thing and end with that. Whatever it is, that regret you have, that pain you have, if you come to him as his son, then he will make you an adopted son. Whatever problem, he'll give you answers for that. But whatever it is, he'll make you live well. So when you become his adopted son, before you were a, bri you were a beggar under the bridge, but now... For you to do well, that's to give him glory. So he wants you to receive all things. Is this amen? So it's through his son, through his mystery, the mystery of Christ, that you can receive this. Let's read verse 27. To whom God will to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. So we talk about hope. The mystery of Christ is hope. Christ is hope. So even if your life is over, this hope where we can do well again, it's this mystery, Christ. It's to become an adopted son. So he gives us blessings. You know, if it was me, I'd, you know, look at your state, your ancestors' state, you know, slandering God and gossiping. 
you know, I might give half a, an answer to your prayers, but God, the God of love, He doesn't remember any of it and He forgives. And by His Son, Christ, He forgives everything and He makes you adopted sons. He gives you what you need now. And even things that you haven't asked for, He gives. So living like that, that is answers. So what, what does He say to do first? To be, it's with His Son. In other words, you have to become a son, an adopted son. Why? Because He's killed His only Son for you. So He's saying become an adopted son. So if you become an adopted son, does he give everything? No. Even if I give you blessings, if you have demons inside of you, you're going to go to the de demons and do other things. You're going to make idols. You know, you're going to ruin yourself and the country with these idols, these demons. And that's why he doesn't give blessings. Well, even if they, if they are given blessings, You wait and see. He's going to make them all ruined. They're the promises of the 66 books of the Bible. So it doesn't just end with being a son. You start with being a son. And at the end, what is it that you need for him to give? You need this, this free gift. This gift is talking about the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. So there's a variety of gifts, many gifts, but the same Spirit. So what does this mean? You become a son by Christ, an adopted son, and then you have to receive the Holy Spirit to receive answers. And not just receiving answers. He's going to give all things. So answers... It's with the Son and it's with the gifts that you can receive all things. Is this our man? So, so the Son, we now know it's His one and only Christ. Then what are these gifts? So let's read verse 4. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. Amen. So gifts, there's these gifts, those gifts. You know, teaching, having power, casting out demons, interpreting tongues. But it's the same Spirit. In other words, to become a son and to receive the Holy Spirit, that's when you can receive. So let's say, to become a son and to receive the Holy Spirit, that's when you can receive answers to your prayers. Is this Amen? This is what God has appointed. So what won't He give you? He'll give you everything. You know, for him to say he's going to give all things, sometimes I haven't even dreamt it. And yet they come. Things I haven't even imagined come. It's, it's amazing these things come. It's not that I want to receive those things. Well, if you fix your destiny, you become an adopted son, so God gives you happiness. Because I am happy, Who can block your happiness? The ancestors, demons inside of you, not repenting. So God says to receive answers. And you pray in order to receive answers. Why can't you receive? Because you're not an adopted son. You're not in Christ. If you want to go inside of Christ, you have to forgive everything. You have to be baptized. You have to die. That's when these gifts, the Holy Spirit comes. But because you have your thoughts and your theories, you say these, this is your way of thinking, your, your ideology. Answers, he gives all things, but you have to become a son. And with the Holy Spirit, you have to cast out your demons. Let's find Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. You have to cast out your demons by the Holy Spirit for him to give to you. If you receive material blessings, wealth with demons, then you're dragged off by demons doing all these wrong things and you'll end up suffering. You know, parents, they suffer so much. They earn some money. It's not even much, but they pass it down to their children. But the children are filled with demons. They don't know anything. So they... They end up suffering as they squander all this wealth. Why suffer? If we become sons and we cast out demons, then what your parents give you can maintain it and you can do more well, then he'll give you all things. 
You want all your desires fulfilled when you pray. So what does he say to become? He says, first become a son and then receive the Holy Spirit and cast out all the demons. Casting out demons, it's only by the Holy Spirit. It's only by truth. So which religion can cast out demons? They can't. So other religions, they, they, they don't talk about casting out demons. But shamans talk about exorcism. Do they really do it? If they, are, if they meet a demon that's stronger than themselves, they kneel down and, they, and then they have, to, they, they have to, you know, go out backwards. But if they have a demon that's weaker than them, then they exorcise that weaker demon and that stronger demon goes inside. But... But if you keep doing this, you end up with having no, no demons that are stronger than you. And so then you end up having, becoming um, possessed and become a shaman yourself. So, so we have to become a son and you have to cast out the demons in your household. That's when all your desires are fulfilled. You receive all answers to your prayers. You want to receive this, don't you? So let's read together. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Amen. Why is it? You see these people, you know, working in front of others. Why is it you become some state minister and then you end up doing all these, these, uh, you know, bad things? It's because you can't control the demons inside of you. There's no one who can control the demons inside of them. It's only the Holy Spirit who can cast them out. So it's only the Holy Spirit that casts out demons. So to become a son and to receive the Holy Spirit. If you're a son, you're an adopted son. So you can receive all the blessings of the Almighty God. And if you receive the Holy Spirit and cast out demons, then He will answer all your prayers. This is an incredible promise. So what is this saying? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Let's find that. It's Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. I have told you to stick this up in your house and to pray like this. So in other words, every time you pray to receive answers, to fix your destiny. If your child says, Mom, give me food, do you only just give food? Or if your child just says, give me a spoon, do you only give them a spoon? If your, if your child asks for a side dish, you know, if they ask for kimchi, do you only just give them kimchi? Which mother's like that? No. If, if, if they ask for food, then you give them a spoon. Even if they don't ask for a side dish, you, 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 you know to give all those things. That's what a mother, a father, a parent is. So even fleshly parents do that as much as they know. But Almighty God, what is it that He doesn't know that you need? He says He'll give it all. But why can't you receive? Because you're not a son. You don't do false debt repentance. And you don't receive the Holy Spirit and cast out demons. So there were, it's when you fulfill these two conditions that He gives to you. You have to become a son and you have to cast out your demons with the Holy Spirit. Then He will answer you. So how can we live this life then? Well, it's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Is this Amen? And I told you to, to write this and stick it up in, on the wall at home. This, this is how you receive answers. So if you come here, you have to receive answers, which is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Surely you need to write this up. And if you look at this every day, the best place is in front of the toilet or when you lie down up on the ceiling, on the walls. Um, near the doorknobs. If you write Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, even as you're lying down, oh, this is what I need to do to receive answers. Even when you're on the toilet, you know, straining, oh, this is how I receive answers. You have to receive answers in any way. You have to have your desires fulfilled. Your children, they may be like, I'm not going to go to that church. You just go, mom. 
But as they're sitting, they're like Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. And if, you, if they keep eating this, they'll get this health. They will change to become this, this physique. So let's receive answers. Every time we pray, we want to receive answers, don't we? Why haven't we received? Because we didn't have Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Let's read together. In Him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. So because of this, that's how you receive answers. Is this Amen? So after you do Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, you receive all things. Your desires will be fulfilled. Your children will receive. Let's receive our desires. Let's receive everything we pray for. Is this Amen? So from today, straight away, write it up. And your eldest son who hates this so much. Even when they're straining, they'll be like Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. And, they'll, and even whilst doing that, they'll be eating it. You know, a bean that's dried up for 36 years in the deserts of Siberia. If there's water being poured on it, it will sprout. It will sprout. You will receive answers. This word, the way you eat it, there will, as you eat it, there will be answers. Let's surely receive answers. May we, our family, our children receive answers. May our desires be fulfilled. Is this our men? Let's all pray. Truly good Father. Firstly, By the mystery of Christ, may we become sons. May we receive the Holy Spirit and to cast out the demons. May we receive all the things that we pray for. May we receive all the things. May we become servants of power. And now, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, our hearts of regret, this reality where I have problems. Today may we become sheep to have no lackings, to have all our problems solved. With this blessing, may we give praise and become witnesses, those who want to receive all the things that the Father gives, for our children to do more well, for Korea to shine in the world, to become a country that helps others. On these hearts and their families and their work, on our country and our people, may you be with them now and forevermore. In the Lord's name I bless.